I just want to highlight that Summer achieved freestanding handstand push-ups, seven reps. That is a huge achievement. That's strong by anyone's standards. How did you go about approaching this movement? Um, how I structured it was in the beginning, well, one, I worked on a handstand independently from my bent arm training. So, you know, have that solid handstand and then working on like leaning forward in your handstand and returning to your proper line. So working on that independently and then working on the strength. So using a wall, doing chest to wall, extended range motion, negative handstand pushups was where I spent the majority of my time at the start. And then once I kind of got strong at that, I moved to doing freestanding, extended range of motion, handstand pushups, and then working the top position. Um, so just touching my nose down onto my water bottle, like go handstand, mini handstand pushup, touch the water bottle. And then by working that bottom position, that top position, and having a strong handstand, one day they just came together. If your goal is a handstand pushup, make sure that you can already do at least a pushup. Because even when I just started, I was like, I'm gonna do a handstand pushup, and you're like doing half reps. And I have many people reach out to me and be like, how come I can't do a handstand pushup? And I'm like, can you do a, a pushup? And oftentimes the answer is no. And people aren't understanding that um, you have to be able to push your entire body weight. They're thinking it's just a handstand skill. And I'm like, maybe go, get some get good at pushups, get good at shoulder press. Like if you can't shoulder press or do a Z press, um, you kind of have to actually build that pushing strength. What strength prerequisites would you recommend before people start doing those wall handstand pushups, etc.? Well, I would urge most people to work on negatives first and have an understanding of the form instead of like we've seen in other disciplines like CrossFit, the way that they do wall handstand pushups is different than doing like a calisthenics freestyle one. So I would urge most people to learn the form first and then do negatives, like do negatives. Instead of throwing yourself up, you're not maintaining proper form, but there's no balance involved. I would say excellent amount of push-ups. Of course, there's other, like it's a, it's more vertical as well. So you would have to have a strong shoulder press, but lots of calisthenics athletes aren't working on their shoulder press. To not overcomplicate it, I think we all agree that you need sufficient pushing strength in a couple different planes, horizontal and vertical. And then you also need the balance freestanding. Once you have that base with push-ups, dips, overhead press, a freestanding handstand, then you can justify doing the wall stuff, as you said, with negatives, etc. Yeah, and making sure you have good control of your core. I'm not saying like you need to flex your core, have a brace, but have good like spinal awareness and be able to go from that arch to hollow body position so you're not doing a lot of compression on your low back while you're doing the wall handstand push-up. So I would say definitely having like a good hollow body. How much does abs slash core training feature in your calisthenics practice? I actually, now that I share more pictures of me flexing, I didn't used to, but now that I share that, I get a lot of questions on what's my ab routine? Like, what is it? And I'm like, I do calisthenics. I do, I try and do all my exercises where I'm paying attention from my hip to my shoulder, like right across my body. I'm trying to engage and do all these compound movements. And that's why I have like a strong core or what I would call a strong core. It's just because I'm actually using it in the, in all the movements, or at least I'm trying to. So I don't have too much isolated core work. Um, I definitely love hollow bodies and arch bodies, but now at the level that I'm at, I'm not doing those quite as much. Do more things like dragon flags, but of course, when you're doing a dragon flag, your lats are working. Like it's not just core, right? Like it's still a compound movement and other things are being strengthened as well. From other people looking in, they would think I do a lot of like six pack exercises, but it's more like the utilization of my core throughout my training. And that idea is shared by a lot of higher level calisthenics practitioners because so much effort is going into those compound movements. It's so fatiguing trying to be consistent, progressively overload, that adding more work, such as direct ab training, can impact your ability to give it your all in your session. And if you're doing, as you suggested, with just being mindful of engagement, tensing up, when you're working at sufficient intensity, it'll be functionally stimulated for the task that you're training for. And oftentimes, like when we get to higher level calisthenics, it's not often our core that's limiting us. For sure, that's a big 
misconception and myth that you've just debunked there because people will see arching happening on a planche or a reverse banana happening with hip sagging on a front lever and you look at it and you think the direct cause is the core it's often a lack of prime mover strength in the upper body muscles manifesting as form decay what advice would you give for people to approach balance skills in an optimal way yeah i would say for balance make sure that you're actually conditioning i wasn't conditioning i was like i'm gonna try and kick into a handstand five days a week that's it and so it took a really long time because i didn't have good shoulders i didn't have any body coordination my wrists weren't strong so i would say if you're starting balance training also have supplemental exercises like working on your shoulder range of motion working on your core um, and you can try your handstands but also just make sure the emphasis is on conditioning as well and then i find that for balance you need to do it quite frequently if personally if you take a few like i take a few days off it does take longer to get to my usual balance point so as a beginner i would say it's going to be better to have sh like shorter training sessions more frequently especially as you gain or you need to gain wrist strength and mobility but it's going to be better to do 10 minutes at the start of every workout day than one day a week just for balance specifically do you follow a protocol like i have to do 10 minutes this many sets this many holds or do you prefer auto regulation of your balance uh, for the balance, um, I don't have it as strict. Um, I do prefer sets and reps. That's like my the bulk of my training is still kind of bodybuilding style where I love sets and reps and I love to failure stuff and I love structure and the conditioning for sure. Um, so in handstands, I would say that's like a little bit more loose. Um, maybe in the beginning i had more structure and i was going to do sets and reps of whole times track those whole times against the wall and program from there but now it's more like intuitive because i've been doing it for so long so if i didn't do a bunch of press training that week then that means i'll probably start my handstand with more press training that day it's kind of more um in the moment how does my body feel for the handstand component if you enjoyed that click here for the full fitness faqs video Peace.